Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist at Harvard Medical School and an expert in acne and rosacea. In this video, I want to break down the role of diet in acne. What kinds of dietary factors contribute to the development and severity of acne? And what kinds of things can we do to help improve acne? Now let's start to dive into the data. One of the strongest associations with acne are high glycemic index diets. What does that mean? Well, high glycemic index diets are high in high sugar foods, you know, processed kinds of foods like sodas, candies, things that have a lot of carbohydrates in them or sugars, those types of foods. And what we've seen time and time again in both observational studies and in clinical trials is that high glycemic index diets associated with developing acne, with having more severe acne, and in fact, if you randomize people to consume a lower glycemic index diet, those would be things like a Mediterranean diet or keto kinds of diets. Those are diets that are low in sugars, Atkins diet, those types of diets that are low in sugars, low in processed foods, that when you randomize people to those kinds of low glycemic index diets, they're less likely to have acne and their acne gets milder when they're put into that group. So there's some really strong and convincing evidence that high glycemic index diets associated with acne and that low glycemic index diet is, helps to get rid of acne. Notably, high sugar foods aren't really good for us at all. They can lead to diabetes, they can lead to weight gain. So consuming a low glycemic index diet is probably just good for our overall health beyond its potential benefit in acne. Now the next dietary factor that's often discussed with acne are dairy products, so milk, yogurt, etc. And what we've seen in observational data is that it does look like higher consumption of dairy products is associated with the development of acne. And this might be mediated by IGF-1, which can be in milk. It's a hormone that can stimulate the oil gland and lead to acne or whey proteins that are in milk as well. However, we don't have evidence from randomized controlled trials, no one's done these studies yet, that changing your dairy intake can improve or worsen your acne. And so while certainly if dairy is not that important, it's something to consider, but for people who like consuming dairy, I don't think it's a big enough factor to really be worth trying to modify. I think that high glycemic index diet is a much better place to start. I think dairy is something that's reasonable to consider, but it's something that I think has weaker evidence. It has a very small effect size if it does have an effect. And so it's not something where I think it's a high priority area. Another dietary factor that often comes up is chocolate consumption. And here actually we do have some randomized control trial evidence to suggest that it can play a role in acne. If you take a group of people and you randomize them to consume a chocolate bar or an equivalent amount of sugar and jelly beans, that group that consumes a chocolate bar when they come back a couple days later has more acne. So it does seem like chocolate can contribute to acne. But again here, the effect size is relatively small. For people who like eating chocolate, I generally encourage them to just keep doing it. If you wanna see if reducing chocolate consumption can help with acne, I think that's a really reasonable thing to try, but I don't think it's gonna make a huge dent. I think there are other strategies, other treatments that are gonna have a bigger impact, and there's no need to make yourself miserable if you're someone who loves to eat chocolate. Another dietary factor that's important to consider is whey protein intake. So I mentioned back when we were discussing dairy that whey in milk is one factor by how milk might potentially contribute to acne. Well, people take whey protein supplements for exercise or bodybuilding. And there are some notable case series for people who are consuming a lot of whey. If they cut back on that, their acne gets a lot better. And so if you are consuming whey protein and you're having a lot of acne, it's worth thinking about. Might it be a time to try and switch to a different protein source like pea protein or another source of protein instead of whey? In addition, when we think about a whey protein supplement, it's like the equivalent of having like six liters of milk so if we think about dairy as a potential factor for acne, this is like supercharging that factor. So whey is certainly something to consider if you're suffering from acne. What about some other nutritional factors that might play a role in the development or treatment of acne? What about vitamins and minerals? What about supplements? Well, we've seen that people with acne seem to have lower levels of vitamin D than those who don't have acne. And that's brought up this idea of could vitamin D play a role in the development of acne. We know vitamin D is important for our immune system. We know our immune system and inflammation are important players in the development of acne. So what might be the role of vitamin D? Well, in randomized controls trials, those who are randomized to 1,000 IUs of vitamin D per day, which is about the recommended daily allowance, it's what might be a typical vitamin D supplement. Those who are randomized to that vitamin D supplementation 
they have reductions in their acne compared to those who just get a placebo, a sugar pill that doesn't have any vitamin D. So that is some evidence that supports that vitamin D supplementation might be helpful in the management of acne. Another vitamin that has some good quality evidence that it might be helpful in the management of acne is vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. There are randomized control trials were similar to the vitamin D story. If you get, if you take pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, you have less acne. Those people who are randomized to that have less acne than those who get the placebo. So that does suggest that vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, may have a role in the treatment of acne. Now, unlike the vitamin D doses, which are kind of just the typical dose you might take in a usual supplement, the dosages of vitamin B5 used in these studies were quite high. They were 2.2 grams per day. The recommended daily allowance is substantially below that. That being said, it does seem like these dosages are well tolerated in the trials. It didn't seem like people had a lot of side effects from taking this. So it is something that seems like it's reasonable to consider and can be safe. Other vitamins that commonly get brought up are vitamin A. Uh, if we think about a common acne medicine, Accutane, isotranone, that's a vitamin A derivative. And so thus we might expect vitamin A might also be able to help with acne. The challenge here is that the doses that you need for vitamin A to be effective for acne are extremely high. And at those high doses, you can run into important toxicities, brain toxicities, neurotoxicities, mood changes. You can get dryness of the skin or the eyes and other important side effects. So I really don't recommend trying to use vitamin A to treat acne because the dosages that you need are so high, they really run the risk of important side effects. Another mineral that gets brought up is zinc. Again, similar to vitamin D, zinc can potentially modulate our immune system and might have a role in the treatment of acne. And there are some clinical trials that support that zinc can be helpful in the treatment of acne. However, there are also a number of clinical trials that suggest that it doesn't work in the treatment of acne. And the dosages that were used in these trials were again, pretty high. Many people had side effects from these dosages. They got stomach upset. And so I really don't tend to recommend zinc as a treatment for acne. I think if you wanna try and take a vitamin or mineral to treat acne, starting with vitamin D or vitamin B5 pantothenic acid makes more sense. Again, low glycemic index diet to me is the starting place. If you wanna do something about your nutrition to address acne, low glycemic index diet is the place to start. That's something that has evidence that it helps with acne and something that's probably just good for our overall health as well. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to see more content on acne and rosacea, please subscribe to this channel and give us a like.